In 1977, the die-hard football fans of Denver, Colorado poured into remodeled Mile High Stadium for another year of Bronco football. For 18 seasons, Bronco fans were given promises. In 1977, Denver was delivered a champion. believed they could do it. But when the chips were finally counted, Denver had unseated a world champion and had had the season Bronco fans have been waiting for for nearly two decades. At the age of 34, Craig Morton arrived in Denver. Two painful years in New York had cast a shadow on Morton's ability to win. But the heartache of New York was behind him. In Denver, his new teammates made him welcome. He became the starting quarterback and he found new peace of mind in religion, all of which contributed to the Craig Morton revival. The veteran quarterback developed a new image. He didn't tell his teammates when he was going to run. He just took off. At 34, Morton rushed for some pretty important touchdowns and threw a whole lot more. His comeback was a smashing success. And Craig Morton owed a debt of gratitude to the man who made it all possible. Red Miller is probably one of the finest men that I've ever known and a tremendous coach and he's just a joy to play for. He's a real fair man, he's, he enjoys the game, he lets people have fun, yet uh, they know how to work for him too and it's great to be in a situation like that. Red Miller inherited a good football team. He told them they could be champions. And when Red Miller talks, people listen. Offensive linemen Montler, Miner, Maurer, Glassick, and Howard listened. The pass protection improved, and suddenly Denver had an air game. In recent years, the Broncos have come to count on their defense. In 77, the Orange Crush looked better than ever. Denver knocked its first four opponents silly and coasted into October undefeated. Could the Broncos really be champions? Denver went on the road to find out. <laughs> to be a champion, you first must beat one. And the Orange Crush had a game plan for the Oakland Raiders. Step one, stop Oakland from running to the left. Step two, put a little heat on the snake. Even a quarterback of Ken Stabler's ability can't win a football game on the seat of his pants. 
take away his ground game, force him out of the pocket, and Stabler is just another quarterback. Denver picked off seven Ken Stabler passes, three alone by number 59, Joe Rizzo. More interceptions than Stabler usually throws in a month. Stabler in the end zone, rolling to his right, looking a flag down as the pass is intercepted at the 15. Return for a touchdown by Lewis Wright. There was a flag in the end zone, which may be holding. Lewis Wright in the end zone as he picked that ball off on the near sidelines near the 20-yard line. And the Broncos have scored! Could Craig Morton and the offense hold up their end? And it's Perrin starting to the right. He is at the 15. He's at the 5. He'll score! Lonnie Perrin on a 17-yard run. He just scooted around the right end and in. And the Broncos take the lead. Morton is back. He's two for three. He's looking, steps to the side, throws the pass. Touchdown, Riley Odom! A 10-yard touchdown pass. Craig Morton to Riley Odom. 42-yard try by Turner. Ball is down. It's a fake. Weiss looking, throwing. Turner wide open. Catches the ball at the 15. He'll score a touchdown. The grand old man. The Denver Broncos overpowered the Oakland Raiders, knocked them from the ranks of the unbeaten, and took sole possession of first place in the AFC Western Division. Just maybe the Broncos could be champions. After Denver beat the Raiders, a trip to Mile High Stadium would never be quite the same. Getting in to see the Broncos brought out the con artist in everybody. Some folks tried clever disguises to get inside. And sure enough, every now and then, one of them would slip through. Yes, sir, anybody old enough to wear pants could see that something most unusual was happening here in Denver. The locals had a name for it, Broncomania. What began as a love affair with Denver's defense mushroomed into a social epidemic. dress for a Broncos game included something orange. If you didn't have it on when you got there, you'd better get it on before kickoff. about it. Denver, Colorado was in love with its football team. Would the Broncos ever lose again? Why, out here in the West, them's fighting words. Denver fans led the league in decibels, and the Broncos led the NFL in total attendance. In week seven, another capacity crowd was on hand to welcome home their undefeated team.
Unfortunately, Broncomania also had its enemies. took its revenge, and Broncomania was shot down in mid-flight. The AFC West was now a two-team race, and the smart money said the Broncos would be the first team to fade. The schedule was one of the league's toughest. Could the Broncos really be champions? The time had come to see what this team was made of. Time for the big push. Every unit was expected to contribute. Every unit did. The special teams contributed Rick Upchurch, whose 1977 punt return yardage was the second highest single season total in league history, and whose 167 yard performance in week eight erased the Pittsburgh Steelers. Veteran Jim Turner and rookie Bucky Diltz handled the kicking. And bomb squatters Schultz, Maples, Hyde, Payne, Egloff, Schindler, Turk, and Jensen had to hustle. Otherwise, their services might not be needed. The defense also rallied. The league's top quarterbacks took their best shots. But the secondary of Foley, Wright, newcomer Bernard Jackson, and Captain Bill Thompson, number 36, was equal to every challenge. Linebackers Swenson, Bradishar, Rizzo, and number 57 Tom Jackson supplemented the pass rush. But Chavis, Manor, Carter, Smith, Grant, and Alzado didn't need a whole lot of help. Five Bronco defenders made all pro, and the rest deserved at least honorable mention. The big push had the Broncos thinking like champions. A fourth down pass with less than two minutes to play was the clincher in San Diego. A last second goal line stand preserved a 14 to seven win in Kansas City. If the game was close going into period four, Denver found a way to win it. The Broncos breezed through November with four consecutive wins and their 11-1 record was the best in football. One more win, and the Broncos would be in the playoffs. But by now, Denver's growing reputation was preceding them into every foreign stadium. No longer could the Broncos sneak up on unsuspecting foes. That final win was going to be a tough one to get, but the big push needed it to be a success. was everybody's choice for NFL Coach of the Year because his big push had gotten the Broncos into the playoffs. Later that night, the Broncos returned home. When they left Houston, they were assured of at least the wild card berth in the playoffs. 
When they arrived in Denver, the L.A. Rams had just beaten the Oakland Raiders. The Denver Broncos were the new AFC Western Division champions. from Mile High Stadium in Denver. This is Bob Martin with Larry Zimmer as the Denver Broncos meet the Pittsburgh Steelers. The first time in the history of the Bronco franchise they have ever been in a playoff game. The Broncos sport the best record in the AFC, but it means nothing now as they go against the 9-5 and five Steelers, the first time Denver has ever played this close to Christmas. Afternoon became evening, but as the Rocky Mountain campfires were lit, the game still had not been resolved. Time now for true champions to assert themselves. Jackson's two fourth quarter interceptions were nice, but Red Miller warned his club that their slim lead was vulnerable, and the playoff season Steelers were aching for another chance. one obstacle remained in Denver's path to the Super Bowl. The AFC Championship was on the line, and the Orange Crush knew exactly what they had to do. The Raiders went nowhere on the ground and each of Ken Stabler's receivers was finding life difficult. Second-year cornerback Steve Foley buried Cliff Branch. Gratishar and company punished Fred Bolitnikoff. And Bob Swenson wore tight end Dave Casper like an overcoat. The offense seized the initiative. Craig Morton's first completion of the day went to Haven Moses as Denver took a 7-3 first quarter lead. Then early in period four, the M&M connection struck for the clincher. Suddenly, Super Bowl dreams were close at hand. Get down, Denver. Go on through the Super Bowl. We're all going through the Super Bowl. Yay! Hey, New Orleans, here we come. Here we come. 
But New Orleans was still one long quarter away, and the Broncos dug in for the onslaught. Broncos needed only one more first down to run out the clock. don't believe it. We, we believe that the fourth quarter is ours, and we, I think we had a little bit more than they had at the end of the game. It's not a team championship. It's an entire state, uh, state, sure. state of Colorado championship, and that's what it's all about. This organization has been down for a long time. The Denver Broncos are now earning the respect of the entire league, and that's what we want. We want to be known as a good team, as a good football team, which we are, and we're going to go on from here, we hope. to New Orleans for Super Bowl XII. In 1977, the Dallas Cowboys were the best team in professional football. Denver was number two. But one disappointing evening in New Orleans does not tarnish a season of unbounded success. We'll never forget it. A rookie head coach told you to think like winners. And so you told a defending champion you were going to take away his title. Then you went out and did it. Thank you, Denver Broncos. Thank you for a championship season. <laughs> 